So it says, um, yeah, it's not <laughs> describing it uh, much of, uh, this is a kind of the shorthand description where it, it's supposed to give you enough of a hint how it's supposed to be configured. So let me draw a, a version of a velocity selector. So you, you could build a velocity selector this way. Um, it's a combination of a capacitor or something that produces a uniform electric field. So the, the charges actually don't matter. Um, what matters here is that through this arrangement, I have set up a region of uniform electric field. So if you imagine on a positive charge moving through this region, as it enters the region, it would accelerate upward and it would hit the, the top plate here. That's the normal way it would go. So what you do, and the way this works as a velocity selector is you set up a magnetic field, which will tend to, um, which will exert a downward force on the particle to make it bend downward. And there's a particular value of the electric field and magnetic field where the upward force of electric, electric field and the downward force of magnetic field will cancel out. It's allowing the, allowing the particle flying through this region to move in a straight line. And this only happens for a particular velocity. Oh, so, so let me write down the expression. Uh, magnetic force is equal to Q V cross B. So I need to figure out the direction of the magnetic field. So velocity is, uh, um, velocity is going from left to right. And I want the force to be downward. So, um, so I want to be able to curl my fingers in this way. That, so um, V is from left to right and B would have to be out of the page so that the V cross B will be downward. Okay, so let me mark that here. Magnetic field is out of the page. And um, so I'm gonna just draw a few of the dots, but these are, it's supposed to be a uniform magnetic field, uniform throughout this entire region. And uh, you know, electric field here, and so the E field, and the magnetic field are perpendicular. That's why it's called crossed electric and magnetic fields. Um, so it's asking for the velocity of the charge of the particle. So I need to set up a system of equation. And uh, here, since I'm dealing with the force, I feel like something relating to force will give me the information. Let me draw free body diagram of the charged particle as it's flying through this region. It, there's gonna be two forces on it. So I'm neglecting gravity. I'm going to be in a regime where I can consider gravity to be negligible. So on that particle, there will be upward electric force. And I set it up so that the magnetic force will be downward. So the equation I set up is okay. Electric force QE is equal to the magnetic force uh, Q. It V cross B, and you can see that oh, the because the velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field, the magnitude of the oh, so if I imagine taking magnitudes of each of these the magnitudes will simply be QE and QVB. And since I'm setting net force is equal to zero, uh, I can just say upward equal downward. So this is my equation. Charges cancel. So it's good to know, well, I don't know if it's good. Um, well, we should know <laughs> that the amount of charge doesn't matter. Even the sign of the charge actually doesn't matter. So the only thing that matters is the velocity and solving for velocity, you get V is equal to um, um, E over B. And this is simple expression might surprise you. So let me plug in the numbers to show that it, the units actually do work out that way. 
So when you do E over B in the SI unit, uh, so 2.04 Newton per Coulomb in SI unit divided by 0 0.1 Tesla, you will see that the uh, you need to do work out to be meters per second. It's uh, um, This is one where you do have to be careful in what unit system you are working with. In the SI unit system, the E over B has unit of uh, speed. There are other unit systems where it doesn't quite work out that way, but you know, cross the bridge when we come to it. Uh, probably never. <laughs> um, so that's the velocity of the charge of the particle. And, uh, and this, uh, let me um, say, call this a V naught. It's a number that I will refer to as I do part B. So um, when the electric field is turned off, the charge of the particle travels in a circular path. Yeah, that kind of, so let me draw in the black line uh, what the path would be if uh, electric field is no longer there, but this uh, magnetic fields are uniformly in all space. Then this uh, particle will bend downward, but as it bends downward, the force uh, also changes direction so that it continues to be perpendicular. So this is going to lead to a uniform circular motion of some radius r. Um, that, uh, so that, that's what the part B is describing. So, all right. So I think I know I'm given the, or I figured out the, the centripetal force. The centripetal force is the magnetic force because it's a, this force here that's uh, causing the particle to move in circle, which I figured out here, QVB is equal to QVB. So uh, V naught, I know the speed of the particle. Uh, the, that's the particle that the speed that's been selected. Um, I don't know the charge. I'm hoping I can handle this somehow. So I've only done one side of my system of equations. Um, so it, I, so this is one of the techniques of right, coming up with the system of equation. I have my centripetal force. I wrote down one expression for it based on the dynamics. The other expression I can write down for centripetal force is something I know from kinematics, which is mv squared over r. Uh, for another game. So I can say, okay, this uh, expression for centripetal force is as valid as this one. So I'm gonna say, this is equal to m v naught squared over r. So uh, hmm, it introduces another unknown mass. Um, and I, I'm given the r, so that's fine. Um, so you have uh, two unknowns here, mass and charge. And this is why it's uh, good that the question is not asking us for mass or charge. It's asking for the mass to charge ratio, meaning uh, M over Q. So you see, can I rewrite this that way? And you see, oh yeah, we can. So that's what we are solving for. I'm going to uh, put M over Q on the left-hand side and everything else on the right-hand side. So M over Q is equal to, uh, oh, one factor of V naught cancels and Oh, wait, wait, so M over Q is, oh, from this view, it's actually on the right-hand side. So the rest are gonna move to left and that'll give me uh, B times R over V naught. And all the numbers here, I know, I know V naught from above up there. Um, and, and when I plug it in, yeah. Um, and yeah, magnetic field is still the same. R is given, and just to confirm, let me, uh, since we are here and I have most of the numbers, let me just plug it in. So this is my v -nut. My magnetic field is 0 0.1 Tesla. And if you look at this expression carefully, the magnetic fields don't cancel. It actually becomes 0 0.1 Tesla squared times the radius. I think that was 1.5 millimeter. I'm letting O from alpha to the convergence divided by the quantity, which is V naught. And you should get uh, kilograms per column. And that's the unit there. 
second time seven period that is Coulomb. Um, so 7.5 times 10 to the minus 10. Yeah, I guess that makes uh, sense um, for most of particles. Uh, 7.5 times 10 to the minus 10. Uh, I'm trying to remember um, how that matches up with the electron mass charge ratio. But anyways, that's the answer. Um, I guess I could have plug it in to double check that it was correct. Um, so I think that's uh, everything we have time for. Um,